Welcome to our episode of The World Brief, where we zip through the latest headlines with a sprinkle of zest and a dash of zestier. Let's dive into today's new smoothie, shall we? First up, we're talking space, the final frontier, and how the US is playing catch-up in the cosmic race of protecting GPS services. Imagine your GPS going, I'm not feeling it today, because of space threats, yep, that's the kind of drama unfolding. China's got a plan B for their civilians, while the US is scratching its head for a backup. It's like forgetting your umbrella in a storm, but way, way above your head. Switching gears, we're heading to China, where the Princess of Waha is on a mission to fizz up her family's fortune after a whopping $18 billion dip. Kelly Zongfuli is stepping up to the plate, ready to swing at the competitive market that's been a little sour on sales. It's a tale of beverages, big bucks, and bouncing back. Lastly, we're sailing into the choppy waters of global shipping, where bigger isn't always better. With recent incidents like a cargo ship playing tag with a bridge in Baltimore, it's clear that these mega ships are testing the limits of our infrastructure and nerves. Plus, with potential geopolitical shenanigans threatening to block trade routes, it's a reminder that the high seas are still very much the Wild West. So, Keep your GPS on, raise a glass to corporate comebacks, and maybe don't book that cruise just yet. That's the world in a nutshell for today. Please stay tuned for the detailed scoop on all these stories. As threats in space mount, US lags in protecting key services. New York Times. The US and China are engaged in a race over time, with both countries vying for control over global positioning satellites, GPS, and the signals they emit. These signals are now fundamental to the global economy, but the US is falling behind China which has developed a plan B for civilians should satellite signals be disrupted. The US is particularly vulnerable to attacks on satellite signals, as it does not have a backup plan in place. Multiple countries, including Russia, China, India, and the US, have tested anti-satellite missiles and developed technology to disrupt signals in space. The threat to GPS signals is becoming increasingly real as space becomes militarized. China's Princess of Waha set to revive a family fortune down 18 billion US dollars. South China Morning Post. Kelly Zongfuli, the daughter of the late Chinese beverage tycoon Zong Qinghao, is set to take over her father's empire amid falling sales. Hangzhou Waha Group, the family's business, has lost ground in an increasingly competitive market, with sales dropping 35% between 2013 and 2022 to 51.2 billion Chinese yuan. $7.1 billion, according to the All China Federation of Industry and Commerce. Competitor Nongfu Spring has seen revenue increase by 62% over five years, and another 28% to 42.7 billion Chinese yuan in 2023. Kelly Zong is expected to take on the role of chair, following her father's death last month. The global risks caused by bigger and bigger container ships. Washington Post. Two recent incidents involving large cargo ships have highlighted the potential risks and vulnerabilities of global shipping routes. In 2021, the Ever Given blocked the Suez Canal for almost a week, disrupting billions of dollars worth of trade. This week, a cargo ship struck a support column for the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, causing the bridge to collapse and disrupt trade from the Port of Baltimore. These incidents demonstrate the immense size of modern container ships and the challenges they pose to infrastructure. Furthermore, they highlight the potential for geopolitical actors to block trade routes and cause significant disruption. For example, attacks on container ships and oil tankers in the Bab al-Mandab Strait by the Yemeni militant group known as the Houthis effectively cut off access to the Red Sea and the Suez Canal, resulting in increased shipping costs and potential global consumer price rises. Other choke points for global shipping include the Strait of Hormuz, the Black Sea, the Malacca Strait, and the Taiwan Strait. The increasing dominance of Chinese-built ships in global maritime trade has also raised concerns, particularly in the United States, which has largely stopped building its own ships. Overall, these incidents highlight the risks and vulnerabilities associated with global shipping routes and the need for increased attention to infrastructure and security. EU hits roadblocks in reaching green milestone as elections loom. Financial Times The European Union EU, is not on track to meet its climate targets, according to the bloc's climate commissioner, Wap Kokstra. Although the EU has the most advanced green legislation in the world, it is set to cut emissions by 51% by 2030 compared with 1990 levels, falling short of a 55% target. The bloc's governments must submit their plans on how to reduce emissions by June. Hoekstra's calculation is based on draft plans from member states, but the European Environment Agency has estimated that a 48% reduction is likely. The EU is falling behind some of its global competitors in the deployment of clean technology. 
Although its subsidies for renewables have been among the largest in the world, China has now overtaken the EU in that area. From village to prison to Africa's youngest elected president. New York Times. Basaru Diome Fei, a 44-year-old tax inspector, has been elected as the president of Senegal, making him the youngest elected president in Africa. Fei, who only recently served time in jail, ran a successful campaign based on addressing the frustrations of the country's youth. Friends and family describe him as studious, loyal, and rooted in Senegalese traditions and his Islamic faith. Most Japanese workers would rather skip the office cherry blossom party, survey. South China Morning Post. A new report from Japan indicates that 60% of employees attending the company Hanami, or cherry blossom viewing party with co-workers, would rather be somewhere else. The study, conducted by Job Soken, the research unit of career consultancy firm Libwa, found that respondents see the event as an extension of work and would prefer to spend time with close friends and family. The study also found that 51% of people prioritize their private life over work matters and 47.6% do not want to use their limited vacation days for a work-related event. No police charges for Taylor Swift's dad over paparazzi incident in Sydney. Associated Press. Taylor Swift's father, Scott Swift, will not face charges over an alleged assault on a paparazzi photographer in Sydney last month. The incident occurred just hours after the end of Swift's Australian tour. The photographer claimed that one of Swift's security guards assaulted him and that Scott Swift then punched him. However, police have concluded that no offenses were detected and no further action is required. Swift's representatives accused the media of aggression during the incident. Doctors visiting a Gaza hospital are stunned by the war's toll on Palestinian children. Associated Press. A team of international doctors visiting a hospital in Gaza have been shocked by the devastating impact of Israel's war against Hamas on Palestinian children. The doctors described gut-wrenching casualties, including a toddler who died from a brain injury caused by an Israeli strike and an infant whose face was blown off in the same strike. The healthcare sector in Gaza has been decimated by the war, with roughly a dozen of Gaza's 36 hospitals only partially functioning or shut down completely. Hospitals such as Al-Aqsa Martyrs are caring for an overwhelming number of patients with limited supplies and staff. Before the war, the hospital had a capacity of around 160 beds, but now has around 800 patients and many staff members cannot come to work. The hospital grounds are also home to thousands of people who have been driven from their homes by the war. Israel has alleged that hospitals serve as command centers for Hamas, but has presented little evidence. The war has killed over 32,000 Palestinians and wounded nearly 75,000 more in the territory of 2.3 million people. On last day of Georgia legislative session, bills must pass or die. Associated Press. Georgia's two-year legislative session ends on Thursday, with the last day for bills to pass both the House and Senate or die as this term ends. Governor Brian Kemp will have 40 days to sign, veto or allow legislation to become law without his signature after the session ends. However, many lawmakers will turn their focus to re-election, with all 56 Senate seats and 180 House seats on the ballot this year. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.